Welcome to this unit 8 where we compute arc lengths of curves. Curves are everywhere and here uh, inspired by this uh, curve here we compute the arc length of uh, this piece here. And uh, this is just for deriving the formula for the arc length. So this is r of 0, this is r of 1. We are traveling here along this curve and let's just assume we have uh, split it into n pieces. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n pieces. So this is uh, r of 1 over n, this is r of 2 over n, this is r of 3 over n, this is r of n minus 1 over n, and this is r of n over n. <coughs> So uh, one uh, idea which we can have is, we don't know yet how to, how, how to compute the lengths, but what we can do is we can just approximate this curve by a polygon. <coughs> so this is a polygon approximation and this length of the polygon, I call this Ln, we can compute this. This is just the length of this piece plus the length of this piece, etc. So this is uh, r of 1 over n minus r of 0 over n length plus and then uh, let me just put already here the dots and then we have r of n over n minus r of n minus 1 over n. <clears throat> so these are n terms and uh, what we are going to do is use ideas of calculus today. So what we have is, if this is r of k and this is r of k plus 1, we have a, we can, we can estimate this difference by just taking, maybe here one sees it best here, uh, if this is very close together, this is actually just 1 over n times the velocity. So that's one of the ideas uh, which we are going to use. Let me just write it here down. <coughs> So we have r of k plus 1 over n minus r of k over n. If I take this uh, difference here, this is about, <coughs> divide by 1 over n, that's about r prime k over n. <coughs> so that's the velocity here. So in the limit, when n goes to infinity here, then uh, when, this is very small, when n goes to infinity, this actually is correct here. That's the velocity times, uh, we can now take this on the other side and so say r of uh, k plus 1 over n minus r of k over n is about 1 over n times r prime k over n. And because I took the length here, I have also to take the length here. So that's about, let me just write this like that. This, this is about, for, for large n, this is uh, the same thing than 1 over n. And then we have a r prime of 0 over n. And then let me just put a bracket here around the length of that plus r prime uh, 1 over n plus and then we have r prime and it stops at n minus 1 over n <coughs> and the bracket is closed here <coughs> so let me explain this what we have here is the length of the velocity vector which is actually the speed we call also speed <coughs> so this is the speed this is how fast we are traveling and uh, so this is the time. This is the time we travel with this speed and then time we travel with times this speed. So this is the translating of going from here to here, from here to here, etc. <clears throat> so this is a, a major idea of uh, calculus is to approximate this uh, uh, difference quotient. <clears throat> This goes to a derivative. So 
that's an important idea here. One important idea of calculus is in, in this, uh, on this side of the board. And then we have another idea, and I put that on this side of the board here. There's another important idea is if I write this down here and uh, draw this graph, this is, this is t, this goes from 0 to 1, and then we have 1 over n, 2 over n, and then we have n minus 1 over n. So if this is, if this is the speed, r prime of t, the length of the vector, of the velocity vector, and then we have the we have the uh, speed is something like that. <coughs> Maybe we are traveling with this speed here. And uh, what we have here written down is uh, an important notion in, in, in calculus too. So we have the function value at 0 over n, which this is the function, right? So in this case, this is the function at 0 over n, and we multiply with 1 over n. <coughs> See? 1 over n times this function value, that's the area of this little rectangle. Now we uh, do the next one here. At, at 1 over n we have this. <clears throat> and then at 2 over n we have maybe here this. Etc, uh, etc. Et and then at the very end we have, uh, let me just put at the very end here, uh, purple, purple. <coughs> so we have all these rectangles, and what we have is this is this quantity which we have computed here, which is the length of this polygon, approximate, approximating the length of this polygon here, is equal to an area under the curve, or almost an area under the curve. This is called a Riemann sum. <clears throat> so what we have seen here is that this is a Riemann sum and for n going to infinity this becomes closer and closer to the area of under the curve. This actually is converging for n going to infinity this converges to an integral, the integral from 0 to 1, and then we have r prime t <coughs> dt. So this is the formula for the arc length. <coughs> Just say that. This is L. So the arc length of a curve. <coughs> given by this formula. If you want, you forget, can forget all this derivation which we have done and just take this as the definition of arc length. But still, this is an extremely important moment in, in this course because what we have seen are two major ideas of calculus. We have seen that we can approximate a, a difference quotient here. We can approximate with a derivative. That's one part of calculus. And the second thing we have seen is that we can approximate the sum of rectangle areas. We can approximate for uh, in the limit. We can we can actually get the limit and and, and get a, get an integral. So these are the two important parts of calculus: taking derivatives, taking integrals, and both enter here in this uh, in this arc length formula. Okay, let's look at a few examples. Let's start with a slinky curve. Very beautiful spiral here, you see here. And uh, let's just uh, write down the, the curve. R of t, this is part a. R of t is equal to cosine t, sinus t, and t. This beautiful helix, <coughs> slinky. And uh, what we do is for the <coughs> arc length, we need just first the velocity, <coughs> and then we need the speed. <coughs> so that's uh, square root of sine square t plus cosine square t plus 1, which is the square root of 2. Isn't that very nice? So this has a very nice speed, constant speed. 
and uh, we have the integral. Let's just see, we go from maybe uh, zero smaller than t smaller than 100 pi. <coughs> so 100 pi means 50 rounds here, 50 turns. And uh, so we go from zero to 100 pi square root of two dt is square root of two t going from zero to 100 pi. This is square root of two 100 pi. <coughs> Very nice. So this is, was easy. Uh, the next example is inspired by uh, a, a toy I recently got. What is nice about teaching, you can buy toys. And so this is a little bit, uh, it's actually quite a, quite take a, for take off. Take off. And I uh, tried that out today, but it started raining and uh, so you can put that on a, on a paper uh, airplane and then you can fly it and then you can actually turn it around and so on. So I will have to try that out a little bit more. Cleared for takeoff. <clears throat> so uh, what we take is the curve is the following. I have it written down here. R of t is equal to uh, t square half t and log t, well log is the natural log, and let's just say from t goes from 1 to 2. 1 smaller than t smaller than 2. So we take r prime t, which is uh, equal to t. Actually I take here square root of 2. You see there, uh, I copied it, square root of 2 t, and so it's just square root of 2. And the derivative of the log is 1 over t. So uh, then we have uh, our prime of t, the length. <coughs> so that's the uh, square root of t squared plus 2 plus uh, 1 over t squared. <coughs> now we were lucky here. I don't know whether you see that. It's difficult to integrate square roots. You'll just see that in a second. It's quite half, tough. But uh, in general, we cannot do it. If that would be not two, it would be one. It would be not possible. We could not do that uh, uh, easily. And uh, so in this case, we can factor it. So we can see that this is the square root of t plus one over t squared, which is t plus one over t. So now we got rid of the square root and we see kind of the integral from one to two, uh, t plus one over t dt, we can integrate that, that's t square half plus log t, and uh, 1 to 2, <coughs> and so that's equal to 4 uh, minus 1 half plus log 2. <coughs> log 1 is equal to 0. You always write log instead of ln. The next example is uh, inspired by maybe this movie here, Hypercube, we go into Four-dimensional space, we look at the sphere in four-dimensional space. By the way, this is horrible movies, everybody dies. Uh, these are... Uh, but uh, three-dimensional uh, three dimensional spheres are very beautiful, and actually this is kind of related to that. That's, a, that's a kind of a, like a hop vibration in this, in this three-dimensional sphere. This is actually, this curve is on a three-dimensional sphere, on three-dimensional sphere in four dimensions, because this is x, this is y, this is c, this is w, and if you look at x squared plus y squared plus c squared plus w squared, this is actually just two. So this lives on a four-dimensional sphere, a hypersphere. <coughs> now the arc length formula which we have derived also works in, in higher dimensions, it works in any dimensions. And uh, so let's just, let's just uh, do that and compute the length of this curve in uh, four-dimensional space on this sphere. So we, what we do is the same thing, we compute the velocity, r prime t is equal to, and then minus three sinus three t, three cosine three t, <coughs> minus four sinus four t, four uh, cosine four t. <coughs> then you can compute the speed, <coughs> So we get uh, 9 sine square 3t plus 9 cosine square 3t 
plus 16 sine square 40 plus 16 cosine square 40. And actually this is nice because that's actually just 9 here. <coughs> and that's 16. So then we have the square root. <coughs> so this is 9 plus 16 is 25. This is actually just 5. Isn't that nice? This kind of crazy curve here. Uh, it's actually kind of, if you look at that, these are these Lissachu figures which we see and we project this into, into space. We get this kind of Lissachu figures which we have seen in that pendulum. And so this is actually quite a complicated curve here, but we, we have a very nice uh, thing. And so, and so it's no problem now to compute that uh, arc length. So what we have is uh, uh, 0 to 2 pi uh, 5 dt, which is 5 times 2 pi. Okay, let's get started with the arc length of a parabola. Uh, I have to warn you, this is a little bit a tricky problem, so let's just put some peppers here. <coughs> but it allows me to illustrate some integration techniques here. So first of all, we have to parameterize this parabola. And it's a graph, so we can parameterize it easily. So r of t is actually just, it's just t, and then we have t square half. So that's x and that's y. Now uh, we have to compute the velocity. r prime t uh, is equal to 1 <coughs> t. <coughs> and uh, the speed, <coughs> the square root of 1 plus d squared. And I want you to do it from minus 1 to 1, so we have to compute this following, in, this integral from minus 1 to 1, square root of 1 plus d squared dt. <coughs> now that's not an integral which comes up every day. You can, you can of course throw it into a computer algebra system to see what you do, but I want to illustrate a little bit also techniques, integration techniques here. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, various integration techniques like substitution, integration by parts, uh, trick substitution or partial fractions. And I can show you two parts here. Uh, one, one of them is the uh, uh, integration by parts. So uh, in integration by parts, we have to kind of multiply it with a function, with a function one, and then we can integrate this and differentiate this. So uh, let's just see what we get when we when we, when we get this. So the, uh, so this is the, the square root of 1 plus t squared times uh, t. So that's when we have integrated. Now we have to differentiate minus, so we evaluate it from minus 1 to 1, and then the integral from minus 1 to 1. Now we differentiate this, so we get, uh, uh, and then we integrate that, so this gives us 2t over 2 times square root of 1 plus t squared times t dt. <coughs> so let me just write that down a little bit uh, more. So that's a, a square root of 1 plus t squared times t from minus 1 to 1. And that uh, minus the integral from uh, these two cancels here. And this gives us a t squared t squared over square root of 1 plus t squared dt. <coughs> Now there's a little trick which we can do, and uh, that's a, a trick from, uh, from uh, partial fractions. So if you would just add here 1 here, so of course we change something, we have, to, we, have, we have to compensate this, so we have just then to subtract, we add uh, the integral from minus 1 to 1, uh, 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared dt. Do you see that that actually works? That minus one with that, with that one here, that cancels this. So this green part actually is canceling, canceling away. But what we have is uh, something nice. We have that integral which we are actually interested in appears here again. So that's uh, appearing, uh, appearing again. So we have here used substitution. 
and we have used some kind of merry-go-round technique for uh, uh, partial fractions. So what we see is uh, we have this uh, this integral which we want to compute appears here again. This is actually, if you simplify that, that's just the square root of 1 plus t squared. <clears throat> so uh, when we write that, uh, when we look at this, this is actually just i again. <clears throat> this integral we started with appears here again. So we get 2i, 2 times the integral we are interested in is the square root of 1 plus t squared times t from minus 1 to 1. And then that integral here, that's something you might, uh, 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 you know, have to look up or, or no. That's actually the arc sign of t from uh, minus 1 to 1. So that's uh, equal to plus arc sine of t minus 1 to 1. And now we can compute that. That's the square root of 2. That's 2 times the square root of 2. <clears throat> and uh, here we have uh, uh, arc sine of 1 minus arc sine of minus 1. So that actually is also 2 times arc sine of 1. And so we can compute i. i is actually just square root of 2 plus arc sine of 1. So that's quite a that's quite the uh, uh, integral. You see the simplest, one of the simplest things you want to compute, like this parabola arc length, has led to some kind of uh, already quite serious uh, uh, integration problems. Now I have to tell you, if you kind of want to compute, for example, the arc length of, uh, of this, <coughs> of this ellipse, right, two, three, so this is, a, this is an ellipse, and you compute the arc, arc length of this, and uh, you parameterize this with maybe uh, r of t uh, is equal to uh, 2 times cosine t, 3 times sinus t. And you compute that and you actually write down the, the integral. You cannot compute it. You get to an elliptic integral. <coughs> These are integrals which we cannot kind of uh, compute with elementary techniques. So these are kind of new, leads to new new functions. Okay, if you look at the curve, then uh, there is a measure for curvature. It tells you how much the curve is curved. It's kind of silly, but let's just try to quantify that. So one way how we can think about this is uh, we have the parameterization r of t. So this is a r of t and uh, so what we have is we are maybe here. This is r of t. So r of t tells us where we are at time t. And uh, we have also seen the velocity vector, r prime of t. This is r prime of t. This is the velocity. <clears throat> so this is position. This is velocity. Now we can scale the velocity if it is not zero so that it has length one. And we call this the unit tangent vector. <clears throat> So that's t of t, which is uh, r prime of t divided by r prime of t, the length. <clears throat> and now curvature is somehow it tells you kind of how this, if you keep the, the length constant, how this vector changes. If you are moving along a straight line, and if you're moving along a straight line, then the, then the, then the vector does not change. So let's just define the curvature. <clears throat> Curvature kappa t, so kappa is a Greek letter also. <coughs> so kappa is a kappa. <coughs> the Greek k, and we just take this is the length of the derivative of t prime, and then we also scale that by r prime of t. <coughs> So that's the, that's the definition of curvature. Let me just explain that. So if I'm traveling, 
if I'm traveling and uh, this is the unitangent vector, like that's my nose where I travel, and I travel and then I'm turning, the, so this unitangent vector changes. And uh, if I'm traveling faster, of course, this uh, along a curve, then this unitangent vector changes faster too. So we want to compensate about this. So, so kind of this change of that uh, uh, unitangent vector, that tells us how fast this changes, tells us about the curvature. So uh, what it turns out, this is actually independent of the parametrization. <clears throat> Which, uh, we will just compute it in examples, which means if you have a curve, it doesn't matter how fast you travel through. This curvature is something you see. It's not what you feel. Right? When you go along a, a curve, you, you kind of feel the acceleration, you feel how you turn. But uh, it's not that. It's, it's, it's independent, of, independent of, the, of the parameterization. So that's actually pretty cool. That's the, that's the curvature here. <clears throat> Now there is a convenient formula which we are going to prove in class. Not here, but in class we are doing that. We are, I verify you that there is another formula. So there is a theorem <coughs> which says the curvature is actually the same thing than r prime t cross r two prime t over r prime t cubed. <coughs> So that's a pretty cool formula because it involves a cross product, it involves velocity and acceleration and uh, you can kind of see if you are traveling along a straight line, for example, if this is r prime of t and r2 prime is the same direction, if you travel along a, a, a straight line, this is zero because they are, this, this cross product is zero. Okay, so this is the most important example. If you understand this example or kind of see this example here, you understand what curvature is. So this is a, a circle of radius r and let's just compute uh, everything here. So r prime of t is minus r sinus t r cosine t and then uh, I can compute t of t. <coughs> This is just this vector normalized. The length of it, of course, is r, because it's just r times, if you take the sum of the squares, you get r squared. So the length is r. So, so this is just minus sinus t cosine t. <coughs> so let's just draw this, this uh, unitangent vector. So this unitangent vector has, uh, this is t, <coughs> has length 1. And uh, we can also look at the t prime, right? We have to do look at t prime. So that's uh, minus cosine t sinus minus sinus t. So t prime is uh, here. And uh, now we have the, the formula is actually kappa is equal to the length of this divided by the length of r prime t. We have already seen the length of r prime t, that's the speed. In this case, this is just r. And t prime t, you see that this is just as length 1. So this is just 1 over r. So a circle has curvature 1 over r. Extremely important notion is uh, notion of curvature in physics and uh, geometry. It's a little bit of differential geometry here, and uh, so it's very very nice. Okay, let's look at uh, the following notion. So we have a curve r of t. This is r of t, and this is kind of we start at zero here. This is a vector valued function. We are traveling along this curve, and uh, uh, it's very helpful. For example, uh, when you are modeling uh, aeroplanes, so you have an aeroplane flying, you have an aeroplane flying, and uh, so there is a 
there's a very natural notion of where you are going, right? That's the, that's the T, that's what we have already seen. This T here, so this is uh, T of T, that's the unit tangent vector. So we have already seen this, so T of T, this is the unit tangent vector. So that's just a velocity vector scaled so that it has length one. Now, what we can do also is compute uh, uh, n of t, which is uh, t of t, t prime of t, the derivative of t over the length of that. So just normalize that it has length one. Now it turns out that this vector, uh, 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 just make it, uh, make it blue here. So this vector is, uh, turns out to be perpendicular to f. <coughs> and uh, we will prove that just in a second. And then uh, we have the third vector is the b of t, which is just uh, t of t cross n of t. This is called the b normal vector. <coughs> so b normal vector is here uh, b. <coughs> And uh, so, of course, that's perpendicular. We know that the cross product is perpendicular to the other vectors here. So this is the T and B frame. So the normal, uh, sorry, that's the unitangent. This is the normal here. Unitangent, <coughs> normal, and B normal. So these are the three vector and all together this is called the T and B frame. <coughs> T and B frame. And uh, it's very useful kind of just if you are uh, on an aeroplane here. So the, the T is clear. That's where you are going. That's your nose. The N is uh, uh, kind of this tells you, uh, you know, whether this, this tells you in which direction you are pulled to make a curve. And the B is, that's your, your cockpit, that's going up. So that's, that's, uh, that's up. And uh, so in some sense, this is kind of forward, this is left or right, and this is up. But now there is a, 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 a nice theorem. <clears throat> so T and B are all perpendicular to each other. Of course, it assumes that this works. So for example, T prime should not be zero, so we can divide by that. And uh, T should exist, so that velocity is not zero. So we have to travel in order that, we have to go with some speed in order that this makes sense. And, uh, but the only thing we have really to show is that these are perpendicular here. So when these are perpendicular, they both have length one and have length one. They're all perpendicular and have length. They, they, if, if we show that this is perpendicular to that, we are all done. Because then we have length one, we have length one, we have length one and all perpendicular. So the only thing to show, <coughs> need only that t times n is equal to zero. We need only that t and n is zero and then the rest follows. But let's see what that actually is. So n is actually t prime over t. So what we have is uh, we know t has length one. So t times t is equal to one. <coughs> That's because it is a unit vector. It has length one. And with a dot product, we can compute the square of the length. So we know this. And now differentiate. So we got t prime times t plus t times t prime, which is 2 times t prime <coughs> times t. <coughs> Now uh, we have dif differentiated the left left hand side with a with a with a with a product rule. This is the product rule here. The 
product rule also works for that product. You can check it. It immediately follows from the product rule in single variable calculus. So it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And this is two times that. And uh, when we differentiate the right hand side, what do we get? If we differentiate one, we get zero. When we differentiate this, this is a constant. So this is zero. And actually this tells us that uh, t prime times t is equal to zero, and so n, which is parallel to that, is t is equal to zero. QED. <coughs> so that's the unit. Uh, that's it, that's the T and B frame.